Hi, this is Sam from Harrison Hobbies, and today I want to review the Surefire DBR Guardian. Uh, so this is one of Surefire's flashlights here, DBR standing for dual beam rechargeable, uh, that has two individual LED assemblies here with reflector, um, the first here for our spot, and then the smaller one here for flood. So the intent of this video here is I want to do a quick walkthrough, show some of the features, uh, as well as put it under the floor after we run it for a couple of minutes because this right here is a heat sink. Uh, it's a piece of metal, the rest of this is plastic, and so this will get very hot. And so we'll just look at how hot it will get, uh, and then probably we'll take it outside and then get a couple of beam shots. Alright, so here is the Surefire DBR Guardian. We have the flood button here, which turns on our flood. And then we have our spot button over here. And then in between the two we have a green LED indicator. Uh, it actually cycles through, so it'll go green, and then it'll start going more toward an orange, and then it goes to a red, so it's more of a gradient versus just three color, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, and in the front here, this is for the max vision beam, so that's a little uh, photo sensor. And so what it does is it looks at the intensity, uh, and then it'll automatically adjust the brightness, and this is only applicable to the, uh, to the flood beam. So the spot, I don't believe, can use that. So this right here is going to be our flood beam. It's got three modes on it. Uh, on low, it's going to be at 15 lumens. On medium, it'll be at 300 lumens, and on high, it'll be at 1,000. Uh, we also have the spot with a 19 millimeter reflector versus the 12 millimeter reflector on the flood. And this one will start out at 15 lumens. It'll go to 250 and then 800. So at max output, we have 1000 for flood and only 800 for spot. Uh, but I will assure you they're completely sufficient. They cannot both be used at the same time. And then if you look inside there, I don't know how detailed we can get, uh, but I believe they're both using the same emitter. Uh, with the exception that the flood here is domed, whereas the spot is domeless. So on the back here we have our USB-C for charging. Uh, I've seen some mentions online that this was applicable for both charging and this could function as a power bank. However, every time I've plugged a USB cable into it, uh, I can't get any output. So I'm thinking that either mine's defective, or I'm doing something wrong, or the internet is lying. So that's just something to keep in mind if you were ever intending to. Then as you can see here, we have a larger chunk of metal, and so this is going to be our heat sink. Then we've got a couple of Phillips head fasteners, Phillips head fasteners. Uh, the front here is actually an assembly also. This is ultrasonically welded. So in all, this costs about $120. Uh, it's one of my many Surefires. I like the brand, I like that they're American made, so I continue to support them. So let's check out the charging on it. Okay, so we've got a generic, apparently Blackberry, so not very generic power bank. We've got a Klein Tools watt meter there. And then we will plug this in. We can see that we are charging here. Again, the light goes from red to a gradient of orange and then to green as it charges. And we can see here that we are charging at a rate of 0.21 amp. So this looks like it is probably already full, which will be good for our test here in a couple of minutes. But so now we'll swap this out and we'll try it on my phone and we'll prove that it isn't a power bank. So we've got that in there. For starters, the screen doesn't even light up. And then whenever we plug that in, uh, it doesn't show as charging here. However, if we were to plug this directly in, we can see in here that we are charging whenever it's plugged directly into the power bank, uh, which just goes to show that this thing, as far as I can tell, will not function as a power bank. Ergonomics wise, the thing fits almost perfectly into your hand. Uh, whenever you wrap your hand around, there's just enough space at the top here to rest your thumb on, and then you can rest your fingers around here. Uh, so you don't actually end up having to touch the surface, uh, but it still gets uncomfortable. So we've got our FLIR here. Uh, we'll go through and we'll adjust the emissivity to around 0.95. Uh, because this is a metal, but it's 
feels like it's textured black paint. And so we'll go with a 0.95 here. And then we will exit. And then we'll look here. And so just from touching it here, it looks like we're at about 70.6. So we'll turn it on with the most lumens here. So the highest wattage is going to be our flood at 1,000. So we'll turn this on high and then we will let it go for a minute here. So the heat is starting here at the top, closest to the LED, which is what we would expect to see. And then it's going to become a gradient as the heat propagates down the heat sink to the very bottom. So up here at the top we're already at, looks like high 80s, low 90s. So we'll pause right now and then we'll come back in in about one or two minutes uh, so we can check this out so you don't have to watch this grow slowly. Um, but again, you can see right there we're already uh, up to 100 degrees. So this gets pretty hot pretty quick. So we'll put that there so you can see the time. It is 9.25. So this actually went up a little bit faster than I thought here. So whenever we turned the camera off we were at 9.25. And so we are now at 927, and I just touched it here, and it is hot. So we're at, look at that, we're at 145 degrees. 140, this, and it, it seems exaggerated on here, but when you touch it, it legitimately hurts. Like, I mean, it's like a car seat in the hot summer. So we'll get that a little bit lower here. So, 130, 100 and... 40s, 143, I mean, 145 degree flashlight is not comfortable to hold, but again, I don't think it's made for prolonged use on high mode because it is legitimately, it is a ton of light. It is far more light than you'd probably need. Uh, if I'm walking around checking on doors at night, uh, I will typically just put it onto the medium 300 watt, so it's nice that you have this as a backup, but Again, I mean, who would want to hold a flashlight that's 145, 147 degrees hot? And so if we look at the other side here, uh, I mean, it's hot, but it's not hot, hot. It's in the 80s. The flood is similar in terms of heat. It's not quite as much. Again, it is not pushing as much wattage through, so, uh, so it's not quite as bad. Okay, so I've got the camera locked now on an aperture of 2.8 and a shutter speed of 1 40th. So that should replicate pretty well what the human eye will see. Uh, and we'll go flood on low, so that's going to be 15 lumens. So again, uh, the little greenhouse that I have built up there is probably about 50 feet away. So that's going to be our low. There's going to be medium, so you can see quite a bit of spill on the shop and the house. And then here's going to be high. So there it's pretty much daylight in front. Uh, it's a little bit of a bluish tint on the beam, but overall it's not bad. Uh, it's still pretty pleasing, and it's definitely not Harbor Freight blue. So now let's look at spot. So there's going to be the low spot, your 15 lumens. There's going to be your medium spot. And then there is your high spot. So not nearly as much spill, but overall it's still very useful. It's got a lot of peripheral there. All right. Thanks for watching my review of the Surefire Guardian DBR. It shows how hot this actually gets. Uh, that is one complaint from a lot of folks that I've seen online, is it does get uncomfortably hot. You can see that we're into up to 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which is remarkable. But overall, it's got a good beam, it's a strong package, it's fun to use, it's nice and handy. The fact that it's USB rechargeable. So thanks for watching, and check back for more videos soon.